Hello, everybody. I am Rhea Aoun Claval, Event Director of TrustTech. I'm happy to be with you today. Thank you for listening in. So, welcome to the second episode of our COVID Cast series, a limited series of podcasts TrustTech is launching to discuss how the coronavirus is impacting the payments, identification, and security sectors. In this fortnightly rendezvous, John Devlin, Principal Analyst and Founder of Paid Strategies and host of TrustTech's Innovation Stage, will share his insights and expertise based on his recent report, The Impact of COVID-19 on Smart Cards and Embedded Security. In the second podcast, we will take a closer look at identification. I'm delighted to welcome John, who will tell us more about how digital identity is solving many problems in a post-COVID world. So John, has COVID-19 highlighted the problems that can be solved with digital identity? Thank you, Ria. Yes, I think for sure um, we, we've, we've seen much greater interest. It's an area where we've conducted you know, uh, pieces of work uh, for a few years now. And um, it's an area where businesses had already been looking at uh, addressing the problems of the traditional processes and the reliance on face-to-face -face checks for proof of identity or for opening an account for uh, um, your know, proof of age uh, these types of applications and um, you know now people working from home people unable to travel due to restriction on movement um, unable to get to physical offices or branches or outlets so um, you know, it's really a case of these organizations have had to look to these solutions that, that have been there and have been uh, developing over the past few years. Uh, I think that the traditional reliance on identity documents with, uh, has prevented many organizations from modernizing, modernizing their business processes. And I think this is, COVID-19 has really been the trigger um, to highlight these issues uh, and also push companies to, to react and, and adopt new ways. So um, I, I'm not sure that there could have been many other um, events or occurrences that could have done this to the same degree. Uh, I'm not saying that identity documents or you know, government credentials will be phased out. I think that they will certainly hold a place uh, and work alongside digital identity, but um, Going digital or, or digitized identity certainly has a lot more flexibility and a lot of uh, different use cases that would be very difficult to, to serve um, without long delays or extended processes in the current environment. <clears throat> um, I think that we will see, you know, uh, yeah, identity is the key for how we safely uh, interact and, and use services, um, how we have that level of trust. Uh, I think that the government issued documents will be the root of trust for much of this, but there will be many additional options and use cases now that digital identity will be factored into. Uh, um, if we compare uh, light for light, just quickly, if we looked at traditional identity documents, so uh, national ID, healthcare, welfare, e-passport, driving license, residency or work permits. So um, from governments, you've got enterprise, you've got consumer, um, all have really been reliant today uh, on, on face-to-face -face checks and, and, and authentication or verification. So, um, and and you know, our, our figures had that 4.7 billion uh, government issued credentials are in use, so which is increasing about five and a half percent a year. Um, but comparing that to sort of what we might use in the, the new way of uh, or the new world of identity, um, there are 8.3 billion smart devices, mobiles, tablets, wearables, computing devices um, that are in use and, and could be used to either support these processes or to hold the credentials. So. Uh, I think that that's you know, one of the points that has to be considered um, when companies are setting up. So, um, <clears throat> you know, with COVID-19 and the disruption, new ways and use cases are emerging and being considered in a variety of uh, industries or sectors to overcome lockdown restrictions, remove the need for physical 
presence or interaction uh, with, with zero contact identification. <clears throat> um, and, and, and we're seeing you know, there's not just one type or form of digital identity. You know, it encompasses authentication, verification, you've got passive and active, um, depending on the, 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 the model that's being employed, the framework that's in place. Um, you've got derived credentials, which are sort of digitized replicas of the government documents to complete standalone uh, identity solutions, uh, tokens as such. Um, and, and then you know, you've got the efforts that are there to replace passwords and for login to, to services online as well. <clears throat> um, the main focus to date has been you know, around financial services and banking, looking uh, how to minimize the process uh, for account opening or taking out a new product. Um, the, you know, the old means are, are pretty outdated and have been in place for a long time. And you've seen that you know, Challenger and neobanks are much more focused in, on improving the customer experience with technology to make it quicker, and more convenient and, and seamless. Uh, and then you, the other main areas for digital identity you know, up till COVID-19 and, and have certainly been increasing were around uh, gaming and gambling, e-commerce, um, you know, all of which, any application where there was a need to know your customer and to comply with any anti-money laundering uh, regulations and, and proof of age as well. So um, you know, the benefits for the businesses and the, or the service providers are that they have lower costs, greater efficiency, they need less resources to be employed, and they're able to conduct at uh, their business at, uh, you know, with more speed, with more accuracy, as there's less data um, entry or reading errors occurring. Uh, it's all automated. Um, and, and we've seen you know, clear examples of how um, readily consumers will accept these. It, you know, if it's well implemented, the benefits are clear to them um, and, and, and they, can, they, they, can, um, you know, they, they don't have to go out of their way if it's built into what they already have. So uh, I think it makes a big difference for consumers and their perception of businesses um, in terms of how they perceive them and, and how uh, modern and, and uh, customer centric they perceive them to be. Very interesting, John. Um, can you tell us what are the additional considerations or limitations of digital identity? Sure, yeah. Um, oh direct uh, reference to, to COVID-19, there's been a massive spike in demand. Um, I've seen reports from some of the companies that we've spoken with, like um, Jumio or iProve and Accuant, that um, you know, increase in demand has uh, jumped by uh, 20 to 100% in the past three months. Um, varies by sector. I think those that were more established have seen the biggest increases. And, you know, those I mentioned around um, uh, financial services uh, and, and online. Um, and, and I think we'll have to see that you know, companies ensure that their systems and processes are properly uh, thought through, that they're going to evolve and incorporate um, more digital with alongside the traditional processes as well. It, 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 you know, it's going to be a balance for them. Uh, and, and there will be a need for manual uh, checks and interactions, but there's no reason that couldn't be done online uh, via the phone or through a video chat. Um, you know, th these types of solutions are already out there. Um, so yeah, there's no quick fix. Uh, and, and when implementing, these businesses have to plan for the long term to ensure that they've got the level of robustness and, and resilience to, um, to ensure that you know, they can continue with digital rather than falling back uh, into the old ways, you know, using digital as a temporary measure. Um, another point is, that there's, you know, and I think this will become clearer, but there are a lot of different systems and frameworks and models and options out there um, in terms of the means, the mode, the infrastructure set up, uh, whether it's going to be centralized or decentralized, whether they're going to see sovereign identity or managed by a gatekeeper. Um, whether they are independently run or commercially or, or, or publicly run by the government. 
um, or other organizations, um, how open they're going to be for, for identity systems. So um, needs to be, you know, at the moment, there's a lack of consistency in, in experience. There's, um, it, it, it's not clear how these programs are going to be implemented. Um, uh, and, and alongside that as well, there's, you, there's, there's growing privacy concerns. Uh, you know, people are worried if they're going to be tracked, how their data is going to be used, for what purpose, um, around their personal data. You know, if companies don't have the correct checks in place internally, not just for, for the customers, um, you know, there is a risk of misuse, deliberate or accidental of that data. Um, are companies overgathering data? Are they oversharing? Uh, and then, you know, just generally around the security uh, for the communication and, and use of that data as well. Um, so uh, it's important for them to, to properly collect and store and manage the data. Um, they need to have fallback processes in place. Can you imagine? Now we've seen one move one way, going more digital. But let's say there was a widespread digital disruption, the equivalent of COVID-19, uh, whether that's malware, ransomware, uh, internet outages, um, how are companies going to manage that? So it, it's not a case of just going to digital, they, they need to have the fallback options in place. Um, and, and then they also need to consider with those fallback options, you know, because there are false negatives and positives, um, there's a a lack of standards in general around uh, biometrics, for example, um, in terms of the accuracy that's required. Uh, and again, um, I think I mentioned it with the payments podcast uh, around inclusivity and accessibility, internet access, smartphone penetration, uh, physical abilities and, and understanding. So uh, these are all important. And then the last point I was going to say there is uh, around regulations. Uh, and then that they need to adapt and keep up with technology and the developments that we've seen. Um, they need to be clear in their requirements and expectations of service providers and, and what's placed on users. Because um, uh, there has been some uncertainty to date around, you know, is, is a digital process going to meet these expectations if it doesn't clearly state that digital identity is okay. Uh, and we've seen some of that in the financial services. So. Um, it is improving, but uh, there's still some way to go there. So finally, how has the market responded and what will come next, in your opinion? Yes, yeah, so, um, uh, well, just looking at the governments, obviously they put in place massive uh, financial aid and stimulus or recovery programs uh, for, for economies and to support businesses and, and individual citizens as well. Um, so that needs to be, um, you know, identity is, is a particularly important point there to ensure that there's no fraud, that the right people and businesses are getting the right money. Um, <coughs> um, we've seen, um, you know, uh, they, they've had to adapt or, or around traditional documents. Obviously, they have expiry dates, certain lifetimes. Um, so uh, there's been issues with renewals and processing, issuing new or replacement replacement documents um, and, and so companies are having to or governments and their partners are having to extend the, the validity or lifetime um, of, of these documents say by six months or so. Um, so I think that you know one impact will be that there will be a, a slight decline maybe up to 10% this year in terms of the number of documents that are expected to be issued um, but then we'll see that recover either at the end of this year or, or in next year as well, when, when things are a little more back to normal or the new um, digital way of onboarding and renewal is uh, in place. Um, we're seeing more derived credentials. Uh, driving licenses are certainly one of the first areas to go digital. Uh, Mexico, South Korea, Australia have all got programs in place now. Uh, I think in Germany, just recently, the national ID card has been digitized on only uh, a limited number of, of phones, initially from Samsung. Um, it's been designed for use with them. So we're going to see more of these type of developments uh, because you know, a digital card can be renewed or issued uh, remotely 
uh, and much more quickly with no delay. Um, I think we're going to see more biometrics being used in more forms of identity and, and we're seeing um, the travel aviation in particular is responding very quickly to um, you know, shut down, looking to uh, attract passengers back in a you know, safe and secure manner um, with more automation, more self-service, reducing the level of physical interaction. Um, companies as well are changing their systems to support their remote workers. Uh, and we're seeing more adoption in areas around mobile for new accounts and SIM registration, real estate, employment. So, um, uh, and you know, these, these are just the, the first stage of the next stage. Um, so uh, we're going to see uh, further development in how it goes from one-off verification or authentication through to more ongoing or perpetual identity checks um, and, and uh, with, with additional levels of, of identity challenges being in place as well, depending on the transaction or the, um, the, the, the process and how well that customer is already recognized. So um, yeah, it's definitely going to help businesses and organizations operate more efficiently in a more consumer or customer friendly manner. It's more accessible and convenient. Uh, it's going to be more seamless, less intrusive, um, but it's not a quick fix. And so this evolution will, will take a little bit of time over the next couple of years. Thank you, John, for this very interesting insight. Um, we hope you enjoyed this second COVID cast with John Devlin. Join us again in two weeks for the next episode of this limited series. Until then, have a wonderful day.